Hey guys, so today I am going to be doing one of my first impression reviews of Zorin OS version 12, which was just released the other day. So I've spun it up into a virtual machine just to see what all the fuss is about. And uh, I've installed a few apps, given it a bit of a test run, and today I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the uh, features that this distribution has. So I've got its distrowatch.com page up here with uh, Zorin OS. Um, it is based on Debian slash Ubuntu, as are, let's face it, 80% of other distributions seems to be these days. Um, it says that the desktop is GNOME slash LXDE, and that's not necessarily true. As you can see here, this looks a lot more like Windows 10 meets Windows 7, uh, but I'll talk a little bit uh, about that in a second. Its main aim is to be a good transitional uh, distribution for people coming over from Windows. It's designed to sort of emulate the look, the feel, uh, even some of the software choices as well. And we have seen a fair number of other distributions try and achieve the same thing. Elementary, Linux Mint, um, Solus, with varying degrees to how much they want to emulate Windows, but a lot of them do appear to just want to present a very user-friendly and straightforward distribution for people that are just hopping over from Windows. Now, the issue that I have with a lot of these distributions off the box is that they're all based on the back of Ubuntu. So they need to offer something above and beyond in order to beat Ubuntu, because Ubuntu is, is basically the source. It's where you know the updates come from directly. It's where the majority of the support is. Uh, it's where a lot of the documentation is written for. So. It does kind of need to be in and of its way something, uh, or it does need to sort of mitigate some of the problems that being associated with Ubuntu but not being an official flavor is uh, is subject to. So, um, so because I would like to see maybe like uh, you know I quite like where Solus is going in the sense that it's uh, an independently developed distribution on the back end as well as uh, all of the uh, all of the more superficial uh, elements, but. It is undeniable that Ubuntu is a pretty fleshed out distribution and makes a pretty great base for uh, other stuff that you want to build on. So anyway, enough of that rambling aside. Uh, the interesting thing about Azorin OS is that it has two versions. It has Ultimate and it has Core. Now Core is what I've got here today. Uh, it gives you the essentials. It gives you the open source stuff. Um, and this is pretty much the, def the, the uh, Zorin distribution on top of the Ubuntu base. Now, it also has an Ultimate Edition. The Ultimate Edition lets you unleash the full potential of your computer, and I'm not entirely sure what they mean by that. Whether into business, multimedia, or gaming, it uh, you can rely on its enormous selection of software to do incredible work or just have fun. And it gives you, so these are the features across the top that are available in uh, Zorin Core and the Ultimate, oh no, the, the, the bottom down here. This is what's available in all of them. And this set of features here across the top are what are included in the Ultimate. So the best business and media apps. Again, uh, not entirely sure what they mean by that. I mean, is there stuff there that isn't in the main repositories? I assume so, but it'd be nice to know, I guess, what. Um, over 20 games, added Mac OS, um, GNOME 2, and Unity desktop layouts in Zorin appearance. Uh, video wallpapers. Uh, Zorin Premium Support. So it seems that support is really the crux of what uh, your ultimate customer is going to really, you know, be driven to to pay money for this product. And I think that more distributions could do that to a lot of great benefit. Is um, is actually have a paid option, and that paid option comes with support. Um, because there are a lot of people uh, who do just ditch Linux because they have had, the, you know, they've had trouble finding getting this one program to work, and they've just, you know, quit out of frustration or anything like that. Um, and you know, these are people who are more than willing to pay for either the software or the support to get it running. Um, but it, it, it is difficult to find on Linux sometimes. Um, so having a support option, an official support channel that is really sort of accountable to the product. Could, could really be very, very useful for this. Now, it is important to bear in mind that I believe this distribution is somewhat uh, in the region of eight years old, started in about 2008, maybe. It'll be on the About page, I think. Yeah, started in 2008, uh, with one goal to bring the most advanced technology into the hands of everyone. Okay, so... Let's have a look at the OS itself, right? So this is our Chromium. I'll just uh, get rid of that. So 
Let's have a look at the software center. That's usually my first port of call. This should look familiar to the majority of you who watch these videos regularly. This is, of course, the GNOME software center. And you can see it here has been infused with the, the theme, the default theme of Zora. And uh, it looks pretty good, actually. It's got a Windows 10 kind of vibe to it. It's kind of, I know uh, the opinion on flat themes is, is very much divided uh, amongst you guys, but I gotta say, I kind of like it. It does look, wouldn't necessarily have chosen that shade of blue, but, uh, but there you go. So this is, again, this is the straightforward and very st simple and straightforward to use software center, but it doesn't appear to have all of the software available in the repositories. So I'll give you an example. If I wanted to install Steam, that's all I get. However, I did manage to install it through the command line. So what did I do? I did uh, apt search steam and then it looked it up for me and there you can see it right there and it says that it's installed. So I then had to type sudo apt install Steam, enter the password, jobs are good. Obviously it's already installed so I won't bother with that. Um, and you, you, if you are used to installing stuff from apt on the command line, you're going to be fine, this is going to be very comfortable. However, there are a few issues with the software store, including things like that, that, um, that I wasn't entirely completely happy that new users would come across and, and, and not be too confused, right? So as you guys know, I use KeyPass X. Now I'm not entirely sure why this is in the non-free. Uh, I believe it is possibly because it is the, the version that you see here in the search results of the software center is the snappy package or the snap package. And in order to install a snap package, to install and remove snaps, you need an Ubuntu single sign-on account. That's not necessarily true. Because what you can do here is if you can um, go back into the command line uh, and you could do snap find key pass x, you'll find that it is available here and you can install it. Um, and we can select it. Mm -mm. What did I do wrong? Ah, there we go. I spelt snap wrong. I think that shows how well a, how good a student I was at school there. And then it's going to uh, basically take a look at downloading the snap there. And um, it's downloading that pretty sharpish. And it's going to and it's going to go through and then install the process itself. Now I'm actually going to cancel the process here because I have already installed KeyPass X from the apt repositories, not the snap repositories. So if I do apt search key pass x, you can see it there, it is installed. But if I type key pass x, I only get the uh, Alopio one, which um, I think is the name of the maintainer and thus is the snap rather than the actual apt package which doesn't appear to be available in this software center. So I apologize if that's a little bit complicated and a little bit waffly there, but um, but uh, it is probably worth bearing in mind that if you if you want the full power of Ubuntu, you're either gonna have to dip into the command line or you're gonna have to install something like Snaptic Package Manager and, and, and go down a more advanced route. If you're only looking for basic packages, on the other hand, the, the software center for the most part should, should cover you in a lot, lot of instances. But again, like I say, this, this is something that I um, would, would be a little bit worried, especially in regards to maybe even intermediate users coming over from another distribution and not immediately being able to pop into the software center and, uh, and do what it is they were planning to do. Okay, so the next thing on this first impressions is to have a look at how this handles Qt and GTK applications. So this is the apt uh, version of KeyPass X, and as you can see, it looks incredibly native. This is a Qt application using Qt 4.8.7, and it looks fine. I also have Caden Live here, which uses a different version, I believe. 
Where is it? About KDE, about, oops, clicked on that again. Version on, yeah, Qt 5.5.1. So two different versions of Qt, it looks native in all of them. And Caden Live definitely is one of those um, applications that distributions from multiple different um, backgrounds have had problems installing, and I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, it might have something to do with the. I think it has something to do with the Qt dependencies and about its um its its be its recently migrated as part of the KDE framework, whereas it used to be Caden Live used to be a project on its own. Now that it's actually a part of uh, the KDE slash Plasma family. Um, and I think there were some teething troubles with that, but now it seems, you know, the icon themes all look nice. Uh, you can also adjust the theme inside, I think, you know, like an application specific theme when it comes to Caden Live. But anyway, that's quite promising. And then that's the, uh, the rendering screen there. Okay, great. So I'm going to close that and just leave that one uh, there. So we've got Qt4 and Qt5 apps. They both look really good. Now that's great to have that out of the box. I've also got Scribus up here. Again, another Qt app. Um, 4.8.7. There's still a fair number of apps using uh, Qt4, but I mean, if it works, it works. So that's the control panel. That's the backup. Uh, this appears to have the standard backup utility that comes with GNOME. Um, I forget the name of it now specifically. I want to say Deja Vu, or, but I'm not entirely sure. Backup. It, this just seems to be called Backup for the most part. But it looks pretty good. You get, um, and this comes, this one is installed um, straight, comes with the uh, distribution itself. And it allows you, yeah, Deja Dup. Is that? But that's not bad. So that seems like a, a pretty good uh, backup restore app that it comes with it. Um, just wanted to include that there. So, and also I, I quite like the default theme for the, uh, the virtual machine there. Not for the virtual machine, for the terminal. And that uses the, uh, the GNOME terminal there. So good staple terminal, can't go wrong with it. So we've got the software center, uh, which I think we could probably close now. Um, I gotta say, this seems to have the same degree of responsiveness as most of the other GTK3 based desktops, and uh, this definitely does look and feel like a sort of another one of these uh, GTK3 based desktops. It looks very nice, feels very slick, um, and also seems to have a yeah. It seems it seems to have some of these uh, these nice sort of gnome. Um, prompts as well which kind of make everything look quite nice so let's take a look at the uh, the backgrounds first because uh, this is one again one of my personal tests for distribution just to show off or just to see how polished and how much thought has gone into the final product is is the the desktop backgrounds that are included with it so I mean it's little touches but the little touches really sort of signify the, the how detail orientated a project is and these are beautiful photographs, so that that bodes well. That looks good. Oh my word! That looks doesn't that? That's a great scenic shot there. So, um, the privacy options they're very similar to to GNOME as well. You can turn uh, location services are off by default. You can purge waste basket, basket and temporary files, uh, and you can then turn on and off usage history. You've got this, most of these are very familiar and they're very similar to, uh, well, they're the same as the uh, the GNOME 3 tools as well. So this does look like a bit of a GNOME 3 reskin. You've got online accounts there, colors, um, Zorin appearance. So this looks like the specific tweak tool for this desktop environment itself. And it looks like you can have uh, a sort of Windows 10 look, you can have a Windows 7 look, you can have like a GNOME 3 look. There we go, that's, that's a much more traditional sort of GNOME 3 look there. That's a bit more uh, a bit more sort of Windows 7. But I actually, I quite like the default, if I'm completely honest. I usually turn icons on the desktop off just to keep things clear. 
Also, the thing is as well, one of the reasons why I decide to have uh, desktop icons off is, uh, well, because I stream quite a lot, so, you know, and a lot of times that you'll sort of go to desktop or whatever, so it's nice not to have all your, your stuff lying around. I sort of consider it the digital version of having, you know, all the junk strewn about your house when you're having visitors around. It's like when you're having, when you've got all your, your work on your desktop icons all on your desktop when you're, uh, when you're streaming. Okay, so... Uh, it does look like you have a fair number of uh, customize options, customizability options here. Oh, you've got dark themes as well. This changes everything. I didn't spot these. And I did say, didn't I? I did say I possibly prefer uh, a theme where you could just uh, change the color around. That's good. Almost like they, they knew. Oh, that that is a good. See that. See, this is where I think a lot of distributions and a lot of desktop environments could really work out their customization settings. Is have your theme sort of determined by the the desktop environment or the distribution, and you know have that as like um, a hard setting that you can't necessarily change, or you have to go into a config file to change or whatever, and then. Uh, just have in the control panel the settings to adjust the colors and, and some of the customizable aspects of it and uh, and you're there like for the most part um, unless you're super into customizing your desktop uh, a lot of desktop environments can, can just get away with just having a color scheme rather than a full uh, difference in uh, complete theme so it's got uh, I've not seen this font before but it does look quite nice as well it does look quite uh, quite polished uh, is that really? Yes, that 48 pixels there. Hmm. So, yeah. And show applications menu. Hmm. Not entirely sure on that one. And intel the intelligent auto hide, I think, is when you've got uh, when you've got something that that takes up the full screen. There we go. Yeah. Intelligent auto hide, so you can drop it down there and it disappears. I'm not necessarily a fan of it myself, but I can certainly see how some people would be. So there you go. That is the that's the dark theme. I'm going to just move it actually on to uh, a lighter theme, perhaps. I'm going to move it onto its default theme simply because uh, this is the first impressions review. But I got to say, I do tend to prefer dark themes. Although I got to say, the light theme on this looks quite nice as well. So for the most part, these look identical to the GNOME 3 uh, control panel. So just to finish off, um, I'm just going to take a quick look at um, so yeah that that key pass X there is I think the app installed version and that is the snap uh, installed version there which uh, may have not been purged from the menu yet uh, the internet tools there's steam there so I did I managed to install steam through the command line it was just uh, a simple sudo apt install steam so even though it was a command line command that I had to resort to it was the easiest one possible it comes with empathy it comes with geary rather than thunderbird uh, as its email client and it comes with wine and a wine menu there as well which is kind of interesting because wine is not something that i tend to encourage people new to linux to use uh for the reason that it is a pain to really get up and running it's like if if you know, your Linux experience is contingent on a Windows program running through Wine. I generally advise to dual boot rather than use Wine. For me, Wine is just getting old games running, and it does that for me pretty reliably. But if it can't get any one of these one games running, I'll survive. I'll move on. You know, it's uh, for me, Wine is is a lot. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot about uh, uh, taking in nostalgia trips and what have you. Um, did I just lose my desktop? Hmm. That is most peculiar. Let's go back into the Zoran appearance. Hmm. 
Could that be a bug or did I do something foolish? Hmm, that, uh... Hmm. Oh, there, well, there we go. And the panel is... I've What I've done is I've set it to auto-hide, haven't I? And I don't know how to undo that right now. So, what I will do uh, is I will wrap up the... Uh... There we go, opacity, hide, intelligent, auto-hide. Show app show applications menu is that the one that I should have selected there? Not entirely sure. Cool. Anyhow, that is the Zorin uh, OS. That is Zorin OS version twelve. This is the core edition. Um, thank you very much for watching. This one, again, it looks like a pretty decent contender for the distribution that is, uh, you know, that would be a natural home for Windows users, but there is a heck of a lot of competition in that field. Now, this is an eight-year-old distribution, one that I've not really heard, you know, that, that's not really made it into the news that much, um, despite being reasonably popular for a reasonably significant length of time at this stage. So um, it certainly is shoulder to shoulder with a lot of competition there. Um, it'd be interesting to see how it pans out. Um, but I'm not entirely sure whether or not it's offering partic you know, too much more than, than the likes of Elementary and, and, and Linux Mint and so forth. But uh, what it is offering, it seems to be doing a pretty good job at that. So that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. And uh, that's about it from me. Until next time, I have been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.